Hi, welcome to Gramster. Recently got this dash cam from Van True. The model is on dash T2. And before I go into more details on this item, I'm just show some of the highlights for this. And some of the accessories. So there are a couple ways to power this unit. We still got the common cigarette power port. On the other end, this is a mini USB cable. And then the length of the cord is at least 10 feet, and that's more than enough for my needs. The second way to power this dash cam is through the OBD port. Um, one end is also the mini USB. On the other end, this plugs into the OBD port. I'll go into a little bit more detail on that soon. Also with a mini USB port or cable. This is an unlock position. Just stick it on my windshield and lock it in place. Now I can plug the power mini USB port through here, through the mount, which would then power the unit plug it into the unit here. The power through this suction cup will then be transferred to the dash cam. Another way is to just plug it into a dash cam directly. But I figure folks will probably want to plug it up here. That way you hide a wire. The angle and pitch of the dash cam is adjustable. Just loosen this little bolt joint over here. Yeah, I can adjust it mostly about almost 90 degrees left and right. Before I demonstrate dash cam, here are some of the other accessories that came in the packaging. Share your videos, share your moments, register your product. They have a quick start guide. Their documentation is all pretty well written, very easy to follow. For those that have used dash cams before, uh, you can just easily hook it up, set it up, even without looking at the manual. Now, looking at the manual is helpful when you're trying to figure out how to use the OBD power port. And here's the user manual. Comes in, covers the topics in a number of languages. German, Japanese. And one of the things I'd like to point out is the specs page over here. So what I used was a class 10 micro SD card. But this one, even though it says 64, I believe on, on the advertisement on Amazon, it said that this can even support up to 256 micro SDs. Before I power it up, I just want to show what's under this little flap. We got the mini HDMI port. This is where I'll insert the micro SD card. And here is the reset button. Just take like a paper clip or a pin. Press down and reset it. And let's power this up here. Takes about 10 seconds for it to power up. And now it's powered up. The blue LED indicator is there. I'm just turn off the recording mode here for a sec. I want to show off the menu system. So I press the M button when I'm in the menu system. I press the left and right keys to toggle between it. And this button I mentioned before, this is the waveguard. Press that. You see this little icon up here. If I press this icon, for example, it turns off the screen. Press it on, turn on screen. Press the right arrow. This shuts off the microphone. In some states, like California, you're not allowed to record audio with your dash cams. Then for the mini button, now I'm just that's record setup. The highest resolution is 1080 which is what I re would recommend and what I record at. For loop recording, I'm just accustomed to setting three minutes. I can adjust it to what you want. G sensor, so when someone impacts my vehicle, it will automatically save that recording. Even if I don't press this symbol over here, the dash cam automatically saves it. Was it audio recording? Show that earlier. Parking monitoring. So this is more about, there's a sensor in front, when it detects motion, that's when it starts recording. Exposure, if I have multiple dash cams, if I have a fleet of vehicles, I can set these numbers here. Uh, yes, I, don't know. I, I wanted the date timestamp, not so much as the, of the others. There's an option for GPS, but I don't have that GPS accessory, that's a separate purchase. Rotate display, in case I inverted my, or set the dash cam upside down. This also supports, let me head back into there. This also supports the time-lapse recording. And then there's HDR. 
I would always recommend leaving HDR on. Now for system setup, I can change my language, for my format the micro SD card. I do that about once a month, and most once every two months. Just date time, LCD auto off. I like to keep mine just three minutes. Just the waveguard indicator and sounds frequency. Since I'm in the US, I set this to 60 Hz. So here's a system info. And um, I don't want to reset the default settings right now. As GPS setup, I currently don't have a GPS unit. And here are the files. If I go to events, these are the recordings that saved when it detected the, uh, the G-sensor activation. And here's normal events. In the daytime, the image quality is good. I can clearly see what's in front of me, to the side of me, thanks to the 160 degree field of view. I w one of my wishes is that, I wish, wish that these would be 1080p at 60 frames, but 1080p at 30 frames, that's still good. And also, for the daytime, the image size, the file size for a three minute recording is anywhere between 290 megabytes to 375 megabytes. For nighttime, the recording quality is okay, I can see what's in front of me, not so much on the left and right, but that's to be expected. My headlight only shines forward. For nighttime, the file size is closer to 300 megabytes for three minutes. One of the other dash cams I reviewed that had parking mode recording was Blackview. And with that one, I had to purchase this Powermagic Pro. Uh, it cost money, it was expensive, and required additional setup. But with this Vantru T2, parking mode recording is actually pretty easy to set up. They tap the power through the OBD port. It's pretty ingenious. They provide a cable for it for those that want to use it. I haven't used it long enough to realize whether or not it draws power from my vehicle um, until the batteries died. I drive my vehicle practically every day, so I don't encounter it. One of my wishes for the OBD power cable is that I wish that they had a power tap. So if I'm able to plug both of these, like plug this in and then plug my insurance carrier's dongle into this, that will be great. But that's really a minor thing. For the rest of us, we can still use the cigarette power port. This still works great. What's also great is that they included a USB Type-A female port in here. That way I can still charge my smartphones, my cameras if I needed to. I like the quality of this dash cam. Good video quality in daytime. Decent video quality for nighttime. Love the accessories, the parking mode feature. It's really adds value to this dash cam. So yes, I'll recommend this. Thanks for watching this review. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching Walker Hamster. Bye.